Hey guys, Brad from SimpleGuitar.com here, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to turn your guitar scales into solos, so that you're not just sounding like you're playing scales up and down, but you actually sound musical and creative and like you're playing a solo. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a few tips on this, but I'm gonna go over my most favorite exercise at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Now, here's the big thing. One of the biggest things that you're gonna have to think about, and I've talked about this in other videos, is how you play the notes. Because most of the time when people are playing scales, they're just playing their scales straight up and down like this. And that's kind of boring, right? And so if you have a backing track going on, that's not gonna impress anybody if you play that, okay? So don't just play that. But one of the biggest things that you have to consider is how you're playing those notes. And this leads us into what is called phrasing. Phrasing is one of the coolest things and it's too big of a topic for us to cover it sufficiently here, but you need to think about how you're playing those notes. So instead of just playing notes like this, what you can do is stuff, well, like I just did on that last note, I added vibrato and then I slid out of that note, right? That is phrasing. So you can think about sliding into notes, sliding into them the other way, adding your vibrato, using double stops. There's all sorts of cool phrasing techniques. Learning your phrasing techniques and applying them to the scales, how you play the notes of the scale is gonna be a huge thing that'll help you sound more like you're playing a solo instead of just a scale. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this so far, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified every time I upload a video, then hit the bell notification so that you will be notified every single time. Now let's get back into how to make these scales sound more like solos. Now, when it comes to the actual notes of the scale, instead of just playing the notes up and down, what we usually do is we just play the notes one at a time like that. So we'll play the first and then the second and then the third and then the fourth and so on and so forth. What you can do that'll sound way better for your solos is to actually play what's called scale sequences. Now the most common scale sequence to start using is just doing your scale in thirds. So that means you play the first note of the scale and then you play the note that is the third note away from that note. So if I play the first note, I'm gonna skip the second note and then play the third note of the scale. So that will sound like this. I'll play the first note and then the third. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to the second note of the scale and do the same thing. So I'll play the second and then I'll play the note that is a third away from that, which is the fourth note of the scale. So I'll go like this. And then I'll do that from the third note of the scale. So I'll play the third, and then the note that's a third away is the fifth, and then the fourth, and then the note that is a third away from that, which is the sixth, and then the fifth, and the note away from that is the seventh, and then I'll play the sixth, and then the note a third away from that is the octave, which is the same as the first, just higher. And then I'll play the seventh and then the ninth, right? So you get the idea. If you write out all the notes of the scale, you're just skipping every other note and going back and then skipping, okay? So it's a really common pattern and it sounds really cool. It sounds like this. Now, another cool scale sequence you could use is playing the scale in threes. So that's playing it in groups of three notes. So what you would do is you play the first three notes of the scale like this. And then I would go back to the second note of the scale and play up three notes from there. And then the third and up three notes. Fourth, fifth, sixth and so on and so forth. Right? 
right? And so that is another really cool scale sequence. If you're practicing scale sequences, that's going to give you way cooler sounding lines and runs that you can use than just playing the scale straight. And you're gonna sound a lot more interesting. So, so far we've got use phrasing, and then we've got use scale sequences. Those two things so far are gonna help you. Now, the third thing is one of the most overlooked, underrated things of music, and that is using your rhythm and your rests specifically. So what that means is you need to use some silence. Insert space. When we speak to each other, we don't just continually speak and spew and spew and spew and spew and continue talking and don't ever take breaks and we just keep talking and whatever comes out of our mouth comes out of our mouth and then it's boring. And then I run out of breath and I have to stop, right? No, what happens is when we're speaking, we speak in phrases. And so we say a little bit and then we pause and then we say a little bit more. And that is another thing that's going to help you. When you're playing your scales, you don't just continually play. You don't continually play notes when you solo. So make sure that you're playing a short phrase, something like this. And then you stop and you either hold a note out or you insert silence. Silence is so underrated. And if you insert some silence by using rests in your solos, it's gonna make you sound awesome. So by doing that, you're gonna do stuff like this. Inserting that silence, that little bit of space, gives people time to think. And it makes you sound like you're actually speaking with the guitar. Another really, really tiny quick tip that I'm gonna tell you is don't be afraid to play notes more than once. That's a huge thing. If you, if you just play a note and move off of that note immediately, you're losing some potential because when we speak, we say the same note, we use the same tone for words a lot of the time. And so you can hit a note multiple times by doing stuff like this. So that was only two notes. I hit one other note a couple times, but you use a little bit of rhythm and you can play a note more than once and it's gonna sound really good. Now here is my favorite exercise to do. One of the funnest things you can do when you know your scale that you're gonna be playing with is you actually say a sentence and recreate the rhythm and as much of the tonality of the sentence as you can. So the sentence can be anything you want. Just say a sentence like, banana pizza is gross. So if that's our sentence, banana pizza is gross, listen to the rhythm of those words. Banana pizza is gross. And then the idea is you're gonna take that rhythm and recreate it with the scale and the notes. You can change whatever notes that you're playing, but the idea is to take the rhythm from the sentence and recreate that. And that gives you a rhythmic starting point to do some cool stuff. And you can come up with all sorts of things. You can say, you can say something as simple as, I like playing guitar. And then listen to the rhythm of, I like playing guitar and recreate that. And by using different sentences as your basis, you can come up with all sorts of rhythmic variety to use in your solos. So guys, those are the tips that I've got for you. Get your phrasing down. Think about how you're playing the notes. Use scale sequences so that you're changing things up. Insert silence, change up your rhythm and use silence and rest in your solos to create more interest. And then to practice this, 
you say a, a sentence and copy the rhythm of the sentence. That is going to help you take your scales from just sounding like flat, straight scales and make them start to sound interesting. And that's gonna be a lot better than just playing scales up and down. It's gonna start to sound more like an actual solo. So guys, thanks for watching the video today. If you've watched this far, I do wanna tell you about a gift that I've got for you. If you go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, there you can get my guide, the top 10 things to learn on guitar first, which is a guide full of 10 things that I teach beginners all the time to get them more bang for their buck and playing real music faster. So go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, download that guide. It's my gift to you for watching the video today. I really do appreciate you and I appreciate you, you know, subscribing and liking and all that fun stuff. So thank you a ton. Go get that guide as my gift to you and enjoy this. I hope that you take these tips and you use them with your scales and start playing more interesting, cool sounding solos. But that's it guys, so have an awesome day today. You deserve it and I will see you in the next video.